So, uh, welcome back. Tonight we're going to talk about uh, dumpers, at least we're going to try. And uh, I'm, I'm not afraid to, to tell you guys, uh, I don't think there is anybody on the planet that truly understands dumpers. There are maybe some very, very specific people that they work inside the dumper industry, that they do miracles. But all the rest of us, you know, we know how they work, we know what they do, we know more or less how to adjust, adjust them, but honestly, you know, the magic behind it, it's not so easy, it's not so easy. It's, it's like chess, you know, you know the moves, but it's really, really, really difficult to learn the game. Right, so let's see if the sound is good, that everything is cool. People are telling me that everything is fine, which is great. So, all right, so uh, let's start. Okay. Um, so, uh, I apologize. It's going to be a little bit boring, but what we're going to try to, to do today. So the first thing I want to show you is to make you understand how how the dumper is wo actually works, what it does. Okay, what is the problem and how we are trying to fix it with dumping. Um, then after that, I want to show you how the dumper, the dumper can can you know fix the problem in different manners. Uh, I would like to show you the functions of, of, the, of the dumpers and then uh, once we have a, a possibly clear idea on what they do and how they do it, then we're going to try and do some labs. Uh, we're going to try uh, and analyze different settings of, of the dumpers on the modern GT, on a modern GT3 car. Uh, and then we're going to try and see um, how we can you know at least understand what we have to do and on, on our car and what kind of problems we're going to fix uh, by modifying the the dumper values uh, what kind of uh, behavior we're we going to create on the car the uh, advantages the disadvantages of our changes uh, this kind of stuff i'll be honest uh, I don't think I'm going to be able, at least tonight, to give you a solution. Because, honestly, I don't know the solution either. Uh, I'm going to show you what all I can to let you understand how, how they work. I'm going to show you uh, with you know demonstrations on what they do on the car. I'm going to show you how we can you know modify the handling of the car with the dumpers then again it's up to you to decide how to use them but at least i hope you're gonna have a better idea uh, on what they are and how they work right so uh the first part is going to be extremely boring because i'm not gonna drive so until we're all a little bit fresh let's start with it and uh let's try and see what's what's uh, what, what what we can do right so the first thing the first thing I want to show you is the problem. So why we need dumpers? Uh, what is the problem? Well, the problem is this one. The problem is a spring. Okay. So I don't know if you can guide. Probably you cannot see it because it's so small. But hey, look at that. Look at this thing. So um, I want to show you. Is is it better for you here? Yes, I guess so. Right. So this little spring is what is happening practically to your car. Your car has tires, which are a spring, practically. Uh, it has springs on the suspension, and it has sassis uh, flex, which is another spring. So it has different springs on top of one of the, of the other. And what a spring does, if you put some force on it, is this. You see, it oscillates, right? So you put some force on it, and then it starts to oscillate like this, okay? So this is what the spring does. So if you make the spring a little bit stiffer, 
then it oscillates faster, you see? Yeah, right? So it oscillates faster. If the spring is softer, it oscillates slower. Okay? Right. So this is this is what the spring does. Okay? Cool. Now let's let's have some water. Right? Okay, so let's see let's think that this is your suspension and this is the limits of of your suspension, right? So this is the spring, my, my hand is the spring, so it can oscillate the suspension, right? So you can see that I can hit the borders or the bump stops of the suspension. Uh, if I put this into the water, then you see I can still oscillate it, but it doesn't hit the borders so easy. Because? Because the oscillations are now controlled by the friction of the water. Let's make this even harder. A bit of honey. No, it's not whiskey or something like that. It's just honey. So this is extremely dense. And as you can see, the oscillations are extremely well controlled, right? So you can have a spring, you can have even a, uh, you know, a very um, stiff spring that creates big oscillations, very fast oscillations in frequency. But if it's dumped, if it has friction and it is dumped uh, very well, then the oscillations are very well controlled. All right? So practically, this is what the dumpers do. They control the oscillations of the spring. And uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I know, guys, you think that that's whiskey, but, you know, uh, if, if we start drinking right now, maybe someday we should do a drinking game while I'm, while I'm talking. Uh, it could be fun, yeah. So, again, this is what the dumpers are doing. They're trying to control the oscillations. And think of it like that. So let's start to do some graph to understand. So, again, we have our spring that does oscillations. If you could... All right. If you could, you know, put a pen at the end of the oscillation, uh, obviously it's not possible like this, but I will show you what I mean at least. Okay. If you could put a pen and you could oscillate the spring, then the pen would do something like that. All right? Because it oscillates. Because it is exactly this, you see? If you do this and move forward, then it would design a graph like that. And this graph is needed for us because now I will show you how the springs generate those kinds of oscillations and how the dumpers control them with the graph. So um, let's let's try to uh, go and change the uh, the view. Uh, so uh, let me go here. And hopefully I can show you what I want to show you. Uh, Firefox, all right. Okay, that sounds cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, so this is practically the graph that the spring shows. Okay, this is uh, a spring. It has its own oscillation, and you can think of it of you know the spring compresses and uncompresses and creates that oscillation that I just showed you before. Um, so, I'll, so I just saw this chat here, and uh, Enciferum says looks like boobs, uh, mate. If that's the boobs that you have seen in and you think those are boobs, then, you know, all the things that they do and they say badly for us sim races are true. We just have a, a steering wheel and we never saw anything of the other, the, the opposite sex. Anyway, so, um, back to the oscillation of the spring. So, what happens if we have a higher frequency spring, so a stiffer spring, okay? So, a stiffer spring, it's going to create something like that. So again, you have the oscillations. They are smaller because it's stiffer, okay? But they are 
uh, at a higher frequency. Uh, so practically, you have this kind of oscillations. Okay. Now, why this um, why this is bad? Because obviously, as I said, you have your tire that you know stays on on the on the tarmac. And for whatever reason, this tire gets a bump or a curb or whatever, and compresses the spring. And at the moment the spring gets compressed, it, it, it gets some energy. And it goes to release the energy, right? So that energy will create the oscillation of the spring. And that means that your, your tire will go up, and then when it gets down, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have lots of energy. It's going to compress the tire, which is another spring. The tire will go up again. It will compress the suspension. The suspension will go down again. And so this will create an oscillation. And the tire practically will start, you know, even jumping over the road. I don't know if you guys have ever seen um, in front of you, uh, at least in Italy or in Greece, sometimes we had some very old cars. And you can see them in front of you going to the road and having one of the of the rear wheels in suspension trembling like that because the dumping is completely gone long way ago because of the age. The damper is probably, you know, completely broken. So there is no dumping at all. And the spring uh, stiffness of the tires and the spring of the suspension keeps doing this. And practically the tire, you know, uh, jumps jumps from from the ground. Now, obviously, in uh, racing suspension, this doesn't happen because we have dumpers, and we want the tire to, you know, absorb the the bumps or the curbs, but we don't want it to then bounce and jump. All right, and obviously, not only the tire will bounce and jump, but it will also move as an extension of the of the uh, the spring, the whole body of the car, which brings other problems because, of course, it's uh, uh, a lot heavier and has l l uh, much more inertia because of that, bigger mass. So all of that uh, is uh, all the bad effects that can happen if you leave you know, a spring all alone without dumping. So you can see the graph here, and the graph shows us uh, an oscillation of a spring. Now, what happens if uh, we apply some dumping? Now, here is what happens. Not only the oscillation will be a little bit less important. You see the blue graph, the blue line, is a spring with some dumping on it. So not only it will be less uh, important, the amplitude of the oscillation, but going ahead in time, it will get slower and slower and less and less and less amplitude until there will be no oscillation. And this is some kind of, of dumping. Um, we can have what they called... Now, obviously, the more dumping, the more this, this line will be, you know, more linear, and we can arrive at a point where we have the so-called critical dumping. The critical dumping is this thing, the red line. So the red line, as you can see, it doesn't even go up into an oscillation. It compresses, it arrives to a point and stays there, you know, or it expands, it arrives to the um, to the equilibrium uh, point. So when you have critical dumping, Instead of doing that, it, it arrives, you know, to the equilibrium and stays fixed. This is the critical damping, which means it's the perfect damping for the energy of the of the spring and uh, the um, and the frequency of the oscillation. Okay, and then we also have uh, the so-called uh, uh, overdamping. So. The overdumping is this. So what's the difference? Let's eliminate some of them. Okay. So the red one is the critical dumping that we just explained what it is, while uh, um, the the uh, magenta purple one is the overdumping. The overdumping means that not only uh, the spring 
uh, won't have any oscillations at all, but it will be extremely, extremely uh, controlled, right? Whoops. Why is this back again? Sorry. Okay. So it's, it will be so much controlled that it won't even allow the spring to arrive to the equilibrium position. It will keep it a little bit compressed or a little bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, extended, depending on, on what they, what we do. But it will keep it there uh, and won't allow it to arrive at the um, uh, at the uh, equilibrium position where the uh, spring doesn't have any accumulated energy in it. Okay, so for example. You could have, um, as we said, a good damping in the water, maybe, but you have an over damping situation in the honey because it's extremely dense. Okay, so I do whatever I want, but it doesn't even arrive to, to the borders because it is so well damped. So, what is happening actually inside the damper? It's on the damper, you have, you know, uh, a cylinder. Uh, very very simplistic but this is what is happening you have a cylinder you have a piston that goes in it and inside you have some kind of dense material it can be air it can be uh sorry air it can be some kind of gas it can be some kind of uh, oil uh, and there are valves inside that uh, control how um, how damping how they control the, lib the the free movement of the piston, right? So uh, this is how it is inside uh, the damping. But the main thing that it does is that it controls the oscillation of uh, the um, of the spring, all right? Okay. So this is how uh, damping works. So let's move back to uh, Assetto Corsa Competizione.